This is the third trust in activity 215. So first thing we're going to do is draw all our external forces. There are three that are given, one at A, one at D, and one at E. At joint A, we have a pin, so there are two possible forces that are perpendicular to each other. So one's going to go up and the other one's going to go sideways or horizontal. All the given forces are going downward. I'm going to draw the Y force for our A going up and label that AY. And since there is no X force, I'm just going to draw a force in the left direction. You could draw it in the right direction. It really does not matter. For C, it's a roller. So there is only one force and it must be perpendicular to the surface. Since the surface is this way perpendicular, I'm going to draw C up because the given forces are all drawn down. Label that C. So when we do external forces, the first thing we need to do is pick a pivot point. Pivot point is the location with most unknowns. The most unknown is at joint A. So our pivot is going to be at point A. The pivot is at A. We measure everything from A. When we do external forces, we know there's a sum of M that must equal to zero, a sum of Fy that must equal to zero, and the sum of Fx that must equal to zero. We're going to start with the moment. Possible moments are moment at A, moment at B, moment at C, moment at D, moment at E, and these must all equal to zero for the trust to be stable. Remember, moment is force times distance, and these two must be perpendicular to each other. Since we made pivot point A, there is no moment, because since we are measuring everything from A, the distance of A is going to equal to zero. Since there is an external force at all the other points, we do not cancel those out. So we, we're going to have FB, DB, FC, DC, FD, DD, FE, DE. This will equal to zero. Now I'm going to substitute in. So B, the force given is 250 pounds. The distance must be perpendicular. Since the force is going down like this, perpendicular to the pivot point is this direction. So this is my D. So that's going to be 3 plus 2 or 5. Next one is C. We don't know, so when we look for C, the distance is, has to be perpendicular to the force. So this has to be distance because the force is going up. This is going to be 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3. So it's the entire length or 10. For D, the force is 1,000 pounds. And distance perpendicular to that from the pivot point is this distance because the force is going down. Remember, it has to make a right triangle. So that's going to be 3. And E is 500 pounds plus E, which is 500 pounds. So the distance perpendicular from the pivot point is this. So that's going to be 3 plus 2 plus 2. This has to equal to 0 for the truss to be stable. Now let's do direction. So let's look at force D. So if I look at D, my pivot point is located here. Force D is going down this way. So if I have the force pushing down, this is going to rotate clockwise. So this is in the negative direction. So for my D, that should be a negative sign. Let's do A pivot point. I'm going to go to E. If this is E. The force at E is down. If I push down, the beam is going to rotate clockwise. So this is also negative. Joint B. If I look at B, it's also forces downward. So if I push on the beam, this is going to rotate clockwise. So the B is also negative. If I look at C, C my force is upward. So if I push up on the beam, it's going to rotate counterclockwise. So that's going to be positive. And if you rearrange correctly, C becomes 775 pounds. 
since it came up positive, our direction is correct. It is up. Now we're going to write a sum of fx and a sum of fy. So sum of fy, everything going up, I'm going to make positive. So I know I designated a y as up, so I'm going to make that positive. C is up, so it's positive. B is down, so I'm going to make that negative B. Minus D, which is also down. Minus E, which is also down. This is equal to 0. So solving for a y, this is going to be B plus D plus E minus C. This is 250 pounds plus 1,000 pounds plus 500 pounds minus 775 pounds for C. So AY comes out to be a positive 975 pounds. So my direction is correct. It came out positive. Now we're going to write a sum of FX. Sum of FX is equal to AX. And since there is only one x vector, this is equal to 0. So ax is equal to 0. So it's not needed. Now that we solve for all the external forces, we need to work on the internal forces. So for each beam, we need to solve the force on that particular beam. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 unknowns that we still have to solve for. And we only work with the joints and we only write a sum of Fy that is equal to 0 and a sum of Fx that is equal to 0. So it is in static equilibrium. We're going to start with the joint with the least amount of unknowns, which is joint C or joint A. I'm going to start with joint C. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a free body diagram. So joint C, we have C going up. Since C is going up, we have a beam. The beam is diagonal. We need to oppose the C that is going up. So the only possible way for this joint to go to oppose C is southeast. So my joint is going to be CE. Therefore, to counteract the east portion, CB must go to the west. Since we know CE is at an angle, first thing I need to do is make it into X and Y. So if I look at this angle, this is my angle that I'm solving for. My height is 3. My length is 3. So to find this angle, we're going to do tangent theta opposite over adjacent. So this is going to be 3 over 3. So theta is going to be 45 degrees. So if I redraw this vector, this is CE. This is my theta here, right triangle. Next to is cosine, so CEX. Is going to be C E cosine theta. C E Y is going to equal to C E sine theta. So now I'm going to redraw the vectors in to help you out. If you're in physics, you never redraw the components in. So if I redraw this in, C opposed by C E Y going to the right is C E X going to the left is C B. So my sum of F Y. It's going to be C minus C E Y equals to 0. C E Y is equal to C. C E, I'm going to substitute in, is sine theta. This is C. So C E, if I divide, it's going to be C divided by sine theta. C we solved as 775 pounds. Sine 45 degrees. Plug this into your calculator. Make sure you are in degree mode. You get approximately 1,096 pounds, and since it came out positive, my direction is correct. It is going southeast. So I'm going to draw that vector in to help me up later. So now I write a sum of fx. Sum of fx is going to be cex, because that's going to the right, minus cb, because it's going in the opposite direction. That's 0. So cb is equal to cex which is CE cosine theta, which is 1,096 pounds times cosine 45 degrees. 775 pounds, and since it came out positive, it is going in the correct direction to the west. So I'm going to draw that vector in. So my next easy vector 
is joint A. It's just the opposite of C because there is no AX. Remember, AX came out to be 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my free body diagram for joint A. We have a vector that is going up. That's AY because we solved it going AY. We have a beam that is going southwest or northeast. Since AY is going north, the other beam must go south. The beam AD must go southwest. Therefore, AB must go to the east to oppose the west component of AD. So if I look at my picture, I need to solve my angle. So this is a 3 by 3, so my angle is still 45 degrees. So I need to resolve this. This is AD. ADY is AD sine theta because it's opposite. ADX is AD cosine theta. So if I redraw the vectors with the components, AY goes up, ADY goes down, ADX goes to the west, and AB goes to the east. So now I'm going to write a sum of FY. Sum of FY, AY is going up, so I'm going to make it positive, minus ADY. This is equal to 0. So ADY is equal to AY. ADY is AD sine theta, which is equal to AY. Divide both sides by sine theta. So AY is sine. So AD is AY divided by sine theta. We solve AY as 975 pounds divided by sine 45. 1,379 pounds. And since it came out positive, our direction is correct. Now we're going to write a sum of fx. So ab is going to the right, so I'm going to make that positive. Minus adx, which is going to the west, equals to 0. So ab is equal to ad cosine theta. ad, we solved previously as 1379 pounds. Cosine 45. This equals to, equals to 975 pounds. Positive, so it is going to the east. Now we're going to draw the directions into the trust. So AD is going southwest and AB is going east. So southwest and east. You should choose either D or E because they have the same amount of vectors. You don't want to do B because it has the most. So I'm going to do joint D. I have a vector straight down because that was given. We also know that joint A, AD went southwest. Therefore, at joint D, DA must go in the opposite direction, northeast. If they do not go in opposite direction, direction they will not be in static equilibrium and the truss will break so this is d a so db could go northwest or it could go southeast i'm just going to pick a direction and i'm going to make it go northwest and if it doesn't come out correctly it will come out negative and then we just flip the direction so this is going to be db and then we don't know DE, so I'm going to pick a direction. I'm going to make DE go to the right. In this problem, we have two vectors at an angle, so we need to resolve them into X and Y. So DB vector looks like this. Make a right triangle. This is DB. So this is DBY because it's opposite. This is going to be equal to db sine theta prime because it's not the same angle as the other one. Why? So if I look at this, my height is 3, but my distance is only 2. So if I do tangent theta, which is opposite over adjacent, this is going to be opposite, which is 3 because I'm looking for this angle right here, divided by 2. So theta comes out to be about 56 degrees. So this is theta prime. dbx is going to be adjacent, so it's db 
cosine theta prime. I'm going to repeat the procedure for dA. So dA is going northeast. Make my triangle again. dA. So this is going to be dA. Why? Because it's opposite this theta. And I, if I look at this angle, that angle is going to be 45 because if I look at dA, this is the angle we're going to look at. And it was a 3 by 3. So this is going to be dA sine theta. And this is going to be dA x, which is dA cosine theta. So I'm going to redraw the vectors in. So if I do that, I have dBy going up. I have dAy going up. I have d going down. I have dE going to the right. I have dAx going to the right. And I have dBx going to the left. So now I'm going to write a sum of Fy. Sum of Fy is going to be dBy plus dAy because they're both pointing up minus d. This is equal to zero. So I'm going to substitute in for db. So db is going to be db sine theta prime plus da, which is da sine theta, because the angles are different. This is equal to d. Now I'm going to solve for db. So db d minus da sine theta over sine theta prime. D was given as a thousand pounds. DA was solved as 1379. This is sine 45 divided by sine 56 degrees. If you do the math correctly, you should get 29.9 pounds. Since it came out positive, so my db is in the right direction. Now I'm going to write a sum of fx, which is de is going to the right, so I'm going to make that positive, plus dax, which is positive, going to the right, minus dbx, which is going to the west. This is equal to zero. So de is equal to dbx minus dax db cosine theta prime minus da cosine theta. So db we solved as 29.9 pounds cosine 56 degrees minus da which is 1379 cosine 45 and if I did that I get a negative 979 pounds and since it came out negative my direction is wrong for DE should go to the left so now I'm going to draw my vectors in so we already know that at joint D a DA has to go north east to oppose joint A, we calculated um, D, A, B positive, so it was in the correct direction. D, E came out negative, so we have to flip the direction, so that is going in the west direction. So the next thing I need to do is calculate joint E. So joint E is very similar to D, so I'm going to draw a free body diagram. So joint E. So we have a given vector E going down. We know which way DE is going because we solved it in at joint D. So it has to go in the opposite direction. So that has to go to the east. We know that EC has to go northwest to oppose joint C, so we know that is going to go in this direction. EB go downward. 
So we have two vectors at an angle, so we need to resolve them into x and y. So EC we know is 45 degrees because this is 3 by 3. So this is EC. This is 45. So e, ECY is going to be EC sine theta. ECX, which is next to, is going to be EC cosine theta. Now we have to do it for the second one, which is EB. EB is going downward. Since this is EB, this is my angle. This is a 2 by 3, and we calculated in the previous problem as 56 degrees. So this is EB. So this is EBY, which is EB sine theta prime because it's not the same angle. This is EBX, which is next to, so that's EB cosine theta prime. So I'm going to redraw the vector. ECY is going up. We know DE is going to the right. We know E is going to the left. We know EBY is going down. And we know EBX is going to the left. So I'm going to write a sum of FY. Sum of FY is ECY minus EBY minus E. This is equal to 0. I'm going to substitute in. ECY is EC sine theta minus EBY, which is EB sine theta prime minus E is equal to 0. We're going to solve for EB. So EB is equal to EC sine theta minus E divided by sine theta prime. So EC we calculated as 1096 sine 45. E was given as 500 pounds divided by sine 56. If you calculate it, you should get 331 pounds, and it should go downward because it came up positive. So I'm going to draw that in. So that means that joint B is going to go up. And this one, BD at joint B is going to go down. BA at joint B is going to go to the left and BC is going to go to right because they have to oppose each other. AD beam is in compression because they're pushing into the joints. AB is in tension because they're pulling away from the joints. BC is in tension because they're pulling away. DB is compression because they're pushing into the joints. DE is also in compression because they're pushing into the joints. BE is in tension because they're pulling away. And then EC is in compression because they're pushing into. Start with external forces, sum of moments, sum of Fy, sum of Fx, they must all equal to zero. Afterwards, you do the internal forces. Start with the one with the least amount of unknowns.